Hello everyone, and welcome back to another Marvel Champions video. Today on the Hall of Heroes, we have some cards from Gamora. So she's been confirmed. I think we all knew that she was going to be, going to be in the game eventually. She's supposed to be coming out in June, kind of after Star-Lord. So it looks like April we're getting the Rocket and Groot um, heroes in the Galaxy's Most Wanted set, then Star-Lord, then Gamora. So it looks like we have Gamora in um, Hero and Alter Ego form, a card called Cross Counter, uh, Nebula, which looks like an ally, and Gamora's sword. The only one that isn't covered or wasn't totally revealed in this um, on Holly Heroes is the sword. So we'll get to Gamora, both sides of her. Um, I believe Cross Counter was covered, so is Nebula. So we're going to just start moving into the cards. We'll be right back with those. All right, first up we have Gamora. This is her alter ego side. Three recovery, she's an outlaw, has a hand size of six with ten hit points. And Skill Tactician. You may include up to 6 attack and or thwart events in your deck from aspects other than your chosen aspect. That's pretty big. So Spider-Woman, I believe, at the moment is the only other character that can go outside of their aspect, I, I think. Or as, as, that's at least been released. So Gamora can not only go outside of her aspect or basically dual aspect. She can actually pull um, attack and or thwart cards from pretty much all the aspects. So it looks like... If you're playing Aggression, you can use um, Thwart or Attack cards from Leadership, protect, Protection, and Justice. So basically, Justice has a lot of really good Thwart cards, so you can basically build an Aggression Gamora with all the best Thwart cards from um, the from Justice, uh, the Justice aspect. So that is huge. And as an action, you can look at the top card of your deck. If that card is an Attack or Thwart event, draw it. Limit once per round. So basically, you get her set up. You can then um, use her action to look at the top card of your deck and basically get an extra card before the game even releases, or be like on your very first turn, and then you know potentially flip into Gamora. So once she's in alter ego form, you can basically kind of set up a future turn with her by using her action to look at the top card and then drawing it if it's an attack or a thwart, and that's limited once per round. But that's still a pretty good ability. So that is the alter ego side to Gamora. We're gonna flip over and look at the hero side of her. We'll be right back with that. And here we are with Gamora's hero size. So, uh, two thwart, two attack, two defense. She's a guardian. Um, and then she has um, these responses. So, finesse, response. After you play an attack event, remove one threat from a scheme, limit once per phase. Or precision, response. After you play a thwart, deal one damage to an enemy, limit once per phase. So, really cool here. So, basically, when you do an attack, you get a remove threat. When you do a thwart, you get to do damage. And then her stats, her baseline statistics are pretty good with 2 thwart, 2 attack, 2 defense. Hand size goes down to 5, uh, 10 hit points still. So that is a really kind of like, I think she's going to be very balanced. So it looks like you can basically do damage and get rid of threat or get rid of threat and do damage. That is pretty cool. So that is the hero side to Gamora. We're going to move into our next card. And next up we have Hit and Run. It's a 3 cost event. Generates an energy resource when you discard it. It's an attack and a thwart, and it's a hero action, attack slash thwart, deal two damage to an enemy, remove two threat from a scheme. And since this is an attack and a thwart, I believe this will trigger Gamora's, um, each of her um, abilities. So basically, you're going to be dealing two damage to an enemy, and then her ability says whenever, whenever you play an attack or a thwart event, remove, basically if you do an attack, remove a threat, if you um, re remove threat, do a damage. So she's basically going to be doing two damage, removing a threat, removing two threat, and then doing two, doing a damage as well. So this looks like it's, again, three-cost event, but it will look I believe it will trigger her ability, or both of her abilities, once. So instead of basically doing a total, I think, here would be, it would deal um, three damage and remove three threat, because her ability would trigger for each of those um, each of those attacks and thwarts. I think so. I believe if you play an attack, it'll do one. If you play a, play a, a thwart, it'll do the other. But this should count as both an attack and a thwart, which should then trigger her ability uh, for each. So that is a huge card. Again, three resources, kind of high, but could potentially you could potentially combo with a bunch of stuff to remove even more threat and do even more damage. So that is hit and run. We're going to move into our next card. And next up, we have first hit. It's a one-cost event. Generates an energy resource when you discard it. It's an attack. So hero action, attack. Deal two damage to the villain. Uh, hero interrupt, um, attack. When a minion initiates an attack, attack. Deal two damage to that minion. So it can either be an attack card or an interrupt. So basically, as an attack, you just deal two damage to the villain. Again, triggers Gamora's ability for that part of it. 
a the hero interrupt. If a minion engages with you, basically deal two damage to the minion. So like let's say it's a two cost minion, it engages, you can interrupt and do two damage right to it, right right, right when it starts doing its attack. So really flexible card. I like that uh, the attack half, which deals um two to a villain, also will then trigger Gamora's ability to remove a threat. So that is first hit. We're gonna move into our next card. And next up, we have Keen Inst Instincts. It's a one-cost upgrade. It's specific to Gamora's deck. It generates an energy resource when you discard it. It's a skill. So uh, basically, exhaust it to generate a wild resource for an attack or thwart event. So basically, get this out, and basically, every time, you, you can basically exhaust it to generate that resource to pay for a, an attack or a thwart. We, I don't, didn't remember seeing any cards in the cards I looked at earlier that specifically need or are benefited from a wild resource, but it wouldn't surprise me if we get cards in her deck that'll say, if you pay for this card with a wild resource, do an additional effect. Like, like let's say one where it says, if it's an attack event and it is paid for with a wild resource, it does one extra damage. I would imagine, or I could totally see them having cards in, in her deck that'll say, that'll be attacks or thwarts, and if you use a wild resource to pay for it, it will then say, like, but let's say it's an attack. Let's say it does two damage to the villain. You know, you uh, pay for it with a wild resource. It'll say something like, deal two damage to a villain, and if you paid for it with a wild resource, also remove one threat. I wouldn't be surprised if we see cards like that in her deck as we get as more more cards are revealed. But these are really good cards because they, they basically just generate resources, and if it's there's going to be cards in there that need specific resources or are benefit, benefit from those resources, We'll have cards like, again, like these uh, sol Super Soldier Serum from Captain America, where it says, you know, if you pay for this card with a physical physical resource, stud the enemy, stuff like that. So we'll probably see cards like that in Gamora's deck, but this is basically a one-cost way to basically, as long as the card remains in play, you get that one extra resource per turn. However, you can only use it for attacks and thwarts, but that's pretty good still. So that is Keen Instincts. We're going to move into our next card. And next up, we have Impede. Two-cost event generates a mental resource when you discard it. It's a thwart event. So hero action, thwart, remove three threat, three threat from the main scheme. If this is the first card you play this round, return this card to your hand. So pretty good way to basically, let's say you open up with this. You get rid of um, three threat. It goes back to your hand. You can then pay two resources again if you, if you have them. Or even in a later round, just play this card again and really keep a lot of those um, schemes under control. So, again, I'm not sure if this is specific to Gabor's deck or if this is going to be a baby part of Star-Lord's deck because Star-Lord's on the card. But uh, these are all new cards that are going to be coming out. But um, with this card here, it's a Thwart event. It also would, um, you know, trigger Gamora's ability. And if you're not playing Gamora with the Justice aspect, you can use her Alter Ego ability to deck build with this card in your deck because she, she can pull, pull Thwarts or attacks from outside of her aspect. So that is pretty good. So that's Impede. We're going to move into our next card. And next up, we have Decisive Blow. Two-cost event generates a physical resource when you discard it. It's part of Gamora's specific deck. It's an attack. So hero action, attack, deal four damage to an enemy, or seven instead if you played a thwart event this turn. So we looked. At, we just looked at Impede. So let's say you have enough resources to do. You may basically uh, play Impede, play it. First card you play, it goes back to your hand. You remove the three threat. Uh, trigger Gamora's ability as well, and then if you have two more resources, you can play Decisive Blow, and then deal seven, since you played a Thwart event before it. Now, I don't know how many Decisive Blows are in the deck, but it's potential you might be able to, um, if there's more than one of these in your deck, or a way you can get it back out of your discard pile, like, immediately, you can basically do a Thwart event, Decisive Blow, Decisive Blow, and potentially do deal, like, 14 damage in one shot, if there's more than one of these in the deck. So that is the, that, that that card is this is huge because it's a good way to uh, basically just do extra damage on top of already thwarting if you had thwarted earlier in that turn. So that's decisive blow. We're gonna move into our next card. Next up we have cross counter. It's a one cost event. Generates a physical resource when you discard it. It's an attack, defense, um, and thwart. Or I think it's or. So looks like hero interrupt, attack, defense, thwart. When you would take any amount of damage, prevent three of that damage, deal one damage to an enemy, remove a threat from the scheme. So, whatever you, you play it on, aside from defense, uh, it will trigger her ability. So if you use it as a defense, it probably won't trigger her ability, because I think her ability only triggers off of playing attacks or thwarts. But basically, um, you prevent three damage. Let's say you're doing it as... Um, let's say you're attacking a villain 
with retaliate or something like that. And you can basically prevent the retaliate damage with this, and then deal damage to an enemy and remove one threat from a scheme. So if you were doing it as a def like, yeah, as part of an attack, because when you attack an enemy with retaliate, you take damage. So that would then trigger her ability from doing an attack and removing extra extra threat. And then you also get to again prevent three damage, deal damage to an enemy, remove a threat from a scheme. So pretty versatile depending on what side you're going to use it on. If you use it as a defense, I think you just get it as a defense and the extra effects of um, dealing the damage and removing a threat. If you use it as an attack or a thwart, um, and let's say like you do that, you would then trigger her abilities for whichever one you chose. So cross counter just seems very flexible, so it'll only cost one, which is pretty good. So that is cross counter. We're going to move into our next card. And next up, we have plan of attack. It's a zero cost event as a tactic. Um, it's an action, search the top four cards of your deck, or top seven instead if you are in alter ego form. For an attack event and add that card to your hand, shuffle your deck. So, really good card here. So, zero cost, you basically just get to play it, uh, search your the top four cards of your deck, or top seven, depending on if you're in alter ego form, and grab an attack card. And again, um, I believe Gamora's cards are, that are attack or thwart, can, you can basically pull, you're basically still pulling an attack card, so you can pull that at, like an attack, or one that's multi use and, or multi function, pull that in, and then uh, grab that. It basically this this be a very good like opening play because Gamora gets to basically look at the top card of, the, of their deck and if it's an attack or a thwart they get to draw it then they can play plan of attack they can then um, search for another attack card add it to their hand very good set of card it's something that would be definitely very beneficial to have like in your opening hand especially because, because you're being an alter ego form already you get to um, look at the top um, seven cards top seven cards of your deck and grab an attack. So that is pretty good. So that is Plan of Attack. We're going to move into our next card. And next up we have Nebula. Uh, two cost ally. Generates a wild resource when you discard it. It's uh, specific to Gamora. And it's uh, yeah, Nebula. So Guardian. Uh, two health. Two attack. Two thwart. With one incidental damage each. And as a response, after Nebula, after Nebula enters play, search your deck for an attack or thwart event and add it to your hand. Shuffle, um, shuffle your deck. So two cost. Uh, her health is kind of low. So she can get, basically get two activations usually unless she defends or something like that but basically being able to play her and then search your deck for an attack or thwart is huge so basically get a, a like a card that could totally just do a ton of damage or get rid of a bunch of threat and then again remember if you're using an attack or thwart depending on what you do it's going to trigger one of Gamora's, Gamora's abilities so Nebula comes out again uh, two attack two attack two thwart two um, health one incidental damage for each of those abilities but I think her response is a is huge. You can basically just get her in, let her do a little bit with either attacking or thwarting, maybe defending against some attacks, or an attack, I guess, depending on how much damage she takes. And then but still grabbing the a really powerful thwart card or a really powerful powerful attack card as well. So that is Nebula. We're gonna move into our next card. And we are back with Nebula, the villain version of Nebula, or the Midian version of Nebula. So interesting uh, um, deck design here. They have basically Nebula being an ally and Nebula being a, um, a minion as well, or an enemy, which is super thematic to how Nebula and Gamora work. Like, if you see, if, you see, if you're basing it just on the movies, they start off as, you know, like, as enemies. They become, basically become friends again and stuff like, and they basically just, like, reunite and all that kind of stuff. So, very cool um, with them doing Nebula as the, um, Midian as well. I don't think it's surprising that Nebula is the, the Midian, but it's cool that we have an ally version and a Midian version. So, uh, one scheme to attack five, um, what's that? Uh, five health, five hit points. Uh, she's an elite and a scoundrel, has retaliate two. So when you attack her, you can be taking two damage. Uh, force interrupt. When the Midian would enter play, discard the Nebula ally from play. So if Nebula is in play, the ally version, you play, or Nebula comes into play, the villain, and it, it then forces you to discard the um, the ally version. So, very interesting how that basically like makes it so there can't be um, two nebulas in play. But um, that, that would be funny if they allowed both, because I think in, in Endgame, they both existed in different areas of the movie. But So, this is Nebula. Five health is huge, and then also has three boost icons. So, if you, if you discard her for like an enemy attack or a Thor or like a scheme, she's going to be, even if you're not fighting her, she's going to be doing either three additional damage as part of an enemy or the villain's attack, 
or going to be allowing them to scheme for quite a lot as well. And then the, the five health is pretty big, so um, Nebula can come out and do quite a bit of damage. And then, of course, you're going to be taking extra damage with her retaliate ability. So that is um, the minion version of Nebula. We're going to move into our next card. All right, and we are back with our final card for today. So this is, it looks like we have, again, there's Nebula. There is a card called In a Bind and Sibling Rivalry, which is, which is the scheme, or the side scheme from um, Gamora's Nemesis uh, set. So side scheme comes in, comes in with four threat. Um, it also has three boost icons when it's used as an activation for a scheme or an attack. Uh, players other than Gamora cannot remove threat, threat from sibling rivalry, so very thematic there. Like, they're dealing with their stuff like one-on-one, -on -one, and nobody else is getting involved. Because it's not it's only between Nebula and Gamora. So that's that's really cool. And force response, after the villain phase begins, deal one face down encounter card to Gamora. So um, you're definitely gonna want to get rid of this as soon as possible. And your teammates won't be able to help you with it. So even on your turn, if you're able to remove, let's say, two threat from it, if you're playing multiplayer, your teammates aren't gonna be able to actually remove threat from that at all. So um, and then you're gonna be getting one additional encounter card, basically at the beginning of the villain phase. So let's say you're in a single-player game, you get this out, let's say you don't handle it right away, or you don't get enough, you get all the threat removed. During the villain phase, you're going to get an extra encounter card, plus another encounter card once the encounter card phase of the villain phase actually begins. And so that could be pretty devastating, so you're going to want to get it, get rid of it as soon as possible, and I definitely love how they designed it, where nobody else but Gamora can remove threat from it. So that is pretty awesome. So again, this is big cards from the uh, Nebula set, or Nebula deck, should be coming out in June, according to Hall of Heroes. There'll be a link in the description to check out the cards on their website as well. So that's going to do it for this video. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you again when more cards are revealed. I want to thank you again for watching, and take care. Have a good one.